Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Fioletta, Senior Editor of Retail Touchpoints, and I have joining me Colin Hunter, who's the co-founder and CEO of Alton Lane. Colin, so much for taking the time. Absolutely, thanks so much for coming. Well, we're in your beautiful showroom in New York City, and um, you know, you guys have really pushed yourselves in, into the, men, the menswear space, have, have really made a name for yourself. So for the folks who are unfamiliar with your brand, why don't you tell them a little bit more about Alton Lane and what you guys are all about. Absolutely. We started Alton Lane really with a simple concept. Most men don't like to shop. And instead of um, pushing everything online, we certainly sell clothes online, but instead of pushing everything online, let's just change the shopping experience. So we really focused on remasculinizing the shopping experience, incorporating incredible technology. We have a full bar in all of our stores, custom leather couches, TV. When a gentleman walks into our store, they feel immediately comfortable. It's always one-on-one. -on -one. And then you get the best custom clothes in the world at very reasonable price points. Oh, that's great. So obviously creating a great atmosphere for your shoppers really helps you stand out you know, among consumers. But you know, obviously there are a lot of new and emerging menswear brands out there. So are there any other ways you guys strive to differentiate and stand out and really make men say, OK, I need to go there to get my next suit? Definitely. I think experience is certainly a core for us, and not only our showroom experience, but how we approach customer service, how we approach reaching out to people via marketing channels. Um, we want to have kind of a 360 view of customer first experience. But I think fit and value are the two other really primary differentiators for us. On the fit side, everything is custom made and we use some incredible technology to capture a, a full body image of each customer. And we can extract over 300 measurements in just 30 seconds. So using that measurement data and our partners around the world, we have over 900 tailors that produce for us we can actually make a unique custom garment for every single customer that, that fits you very well, but at price points that are far more accessible than even off-the-rack competitors. Mm -hmm. And we do that just by having a more streamlined supply chain. So we really focus a lot on being as efficient as, a possible, as, as possible in our supply chain, whether it's kind of the vendors that we use to help us get data, like NetSuite, mm -hmm. or at our production facilities or at our fulfillment centers, it's, it's finding the best partners that will give us the most streamlined operations so we can deliver that value to the customer. Oh, that's great. You talked a lot about customization. I think that's such a hot topic in the retail world right now. They want to you know, reach out to consumers on a more one-to-one -one basis from service to marketing and of course the product that they're buying. So how, how do you guys kind of capitalize on customization and really show the consumer we know who you are and we know what you want out of this experience? It's a great question. To me, customization starts with data. Data is the backbone of um, relationships and, and scale and it's a very simple formula for us customer data enables better customer relationships and the better you, relationship you can build with your customer the more loyalty you can get from that customer and then from a business standpoint customer loyalty leads to customer lifetime value so if we can use data to um, get an amazing relationship with our customers and build that loyalty we can have customers for the next 20 to 30 years now, how we actually use that data, um, you know, NetSuite is a huge part of our backbone of our company today. We used to have a number of disparate systems kept capturing data in a number of ways. By consolidating to one central data repository, we can pull any piece of data about our customer segments in a matter of seconds. Wow. So what that allows us to do is not only send more targeted and relevant email communications, so if you wear suits to work, you're going to get emails about suits. Whereas if you don't wear suits to work, you shouldn't get those emails. Um, but even down to events, we hosted a scotch tasting in our showroom this past week, and we were able to use that, that data in NetSuite to look at customers that fit into certain demographics okay. and that had certain interests specifically in scotch um, that lived within a few blocks of our showroom so it would be convenient for them. And we can pull all of that data in just a matter of seconds. Wow, that's pretty incredible. And I think getting down to the personal tastes and styles, it, it's really how you build that relationship with the consumer. And I could imagine for you know your target demographic, men, it's almost more challenging to kind of build a relationship with them because sometimes, like you said, they're not always the most willing or sure. eager to vis visit a store. Well, what's interesting is that it's really just a, a return to how business used to be. And in my, my view, how business should be. You know, in small towns, you used to know your 
butcher or you'd know your carpenter or you know, your plumber. And um, in a city, in big cities around the world, it's a lot harder to, to have that sort of relationship. So we are trying to get back to the old way of doing business where you'd actually have a relationship with your clothier. And we not only know your preferences from a style perspective, but we know your kids' names, you know, or we know where you went to college. And I'll send customers emails, you know, especially in, in March Madness, kind of talking about their teams, and we do some playful banter back and forth. But we're only able to, to have that relationship on this sort of global scale because we can control that data. So data sometimes feels very impersonal, mm -hmm. but we, we really try to utilize it to deliver that old school personal relationship. Um, and that, I think that's what creates that experience, but also really makes it much more efficient for the customer. We have customers in New York that will go into our San Francisco showroom, and when they walk in for the first time, we immediately know who they are, all, all of the information about them, but what their style preferences are. So we're not starting from ground zero every single time, which was a real frustration for me before I started Alton Lane. I'd go into a retailer and I could shop you know, 30 times down the street at you know, that local store, and they still wouldn't know who I was. Right. So you're talking about getting back to customer service basics, which I think is so key now, again, like you said, to stand out because there are so many different options out there. There are so many different online retailers. You know, it kind of becomes a sea of options and it kind of you know, messes with consumers. So why don't you walk us through the typical showroom experience? What happens when a man walks in, you know, from initial greeting to, you know, making that purchase? And what role does technology play in that sure. experience? The first element of the experience is very relational. So we try to spend the first 10 to 15 minutes chatting as if you were, you were coming into our home. You know, how's your week going? Tell me about yourself. Where do you work? Do you wear suits to work? Um, you know, and, and just through the conversation of how's your winter been or have you done any trips lately? And um, we'll, we'll use that just to get to know the customer and build a connection and make them feel comfortable. And, and it's also just a lot more fun for us and for our staff to, right. it, to not just feel like we're, it's a very transactional relationship, but a real genuine, authentic relationship. Then we move into, once we understand the customer needs and, and who they are and what they're looking for, we kind of lead them on a choose your own adventure to design your own garments. And so we will pull out a number of fabric books. We have over 3,000 suiting or shirting fabrics wow. sourced from some of the best mills in the world. And we will pull those fabrics out and our staff is their style experts. So they can find the exact fabric you're looking for in a matter of seconds. And we'll, we'll show you a number of options based on price point, based on the feel, based on the weight of the fabric and whether you're gonna be traveling, really based on your exact needs. We'll pull out those fabrics and then walk you through every design option from what sort of lapel you'd like to do, to the width of the lapel, to the number of buttons on the jacket, and whether you want you know, an interesting color on the sleeve of, of your jacket just to bring out your personality a little bit, the lining, all the options. Once we've designed it, we then go into the measurement component. And that's where we use our 3D body scanning technology, where you stand inside and 32 sensors um, emit white light to, uh, to capture every um, element of your body. And from that, we can extract over 300 measurements. After the measurements are all done, then we say goodbye and, mm -hmm. and send you on your way. Um, so th the, the 3D body scanner is certainly a large component of our technology. Um, I think one of the key elements up front, we have a custom built iPad interface that allows us to capture all of our measurements, um, even capture some of the demographic details about the customer. And all of that information then syncs seamlessly into NetSuite, which then pushes to our factories. So we've really created that seamless integration to our supply chain, um, which just helps drive a more efficient company. So that customer profile that you're creating in the showroom gets delivered across the entire Absolutely. organization. Yep. Oh, that's great. So from, from initial visit, visit to creation, what's that timeline look like to create a custom suit? For a new customer, it, typically about 45 to 50 minutes. Okay. Um, for an existing customer, once we already have your measurements, I've seen guys walk in here and walk out four minutes later because wow. they knew exactly what they wanted and the same options as their, as their last time. So it really makes it much more efficient for guys that don't like to shop. Mm -hmm. um, on the other end of the spectrum, for guys that love fabrics and love the shopping experience, I've 
dealt with the customer from 11 p.m. till 5.30 in the morning. Hope, wow. hope to not do that too frequently, <laughs> but, um, but he just was loving the experience and, um, and wanted to, to be able to serve him in that way. Well, that's great. It's always good when people love the experience, right? Um, so beyond the showroom, which is obviously such a key role to your business model, are you guys experimenting with any other types of store formats or you know, brick and mortar strategies to raise awareness and, and you know, acquire potentially new customers? Definitely. We're big believers in omni-channel retail, that in, in that being the future model. Um, and so for us, it's not just about brick and mortar and e-commerce, but we're looking at high-touch digital solutions. So a, a seasonal swatch program that's all digital, where we will use customer, um, customer preferences and customer style, uh, style preferences and assemble, assemble a curated swatch collection for that unique customer digitally send it to them and then you can purchase over the phone in a matter of seconds um, what an expert style has picked out for you. We're, we also recently built a 31 foot mobile showroom. Uh, it's a showroom on wheels, it's really cool, That's it's really going to be cool. launching this year and it has our scanner custom built into it, uh, has a bar built into it that we would only use when we're parked. Mm -hmm. But um, this allows us to bring our, our experience to cities around the country, to college campuses to graduate schools um, and really bring the value of high quality custom tailoring to people everywhere. Um, right. So we're really excited about that and then we're also exploring some really interesting concepts with partners of everything from opening kind of secret showrooms inside hotels around the country wow. uh, where you actually wouldn't even know it was there unless you had an extra, you were given a key to the room and a certain room number and you open the door and it looks like our showroom. Um, so, I, and taking that concept to high-end cruises, to um, casinos, mm -hmm. um, and a number of other small spaces where customers are either living or playing or working, um, really kind of not only making it more convenient for customers, but pushing along the theme of surprise and delight. and What, mm -hmm. what would be fun for us? And you, we, we interact with our customers a lot and ask their feedback and advice so we can deliver something that they would be excited about and, and take that concept across the country. Right, and I think all consumers love that idea of exclusivity or being involved with something that not everyone can get a key to the showroom or get access to the showroom. So I think that's a really fun component. Exactly. Yeah, attainable luxury is, is what we call it. And mm -hmm. we want the feel of exclusivity without the pomp that sometimes go, goes with it. That's great. So beyond all of those really fun, you know, store type ventures, is there anything else that we can expect from Alton Lane, you know, going through 2015 and beyond any other, you know, things we should be on the lookout for? Absolutely. Um, you know, the past few years for us has really been about setting the foundation for growth and it's getting the right technology, the right production partners, the right fabric mills, um, the right team in place that we can really take our concept on a national level. So we are about to kick, out, kick off a, a large growth spurt where we are going to be taking our concept to 40 locations around the country. Um, so that, that's a big component for us. We're also exploring new products. So we use our customer feedback and our wealth of data about customer measurements. We're developing denim, we're looking into cashmere sweaters, more casual shirting line, um, outerwear, and, and accessories. So really interesting concepts there. And then something that we're exploring that is still very, um, very preliminary, but um, we are exploring what a women's line would look like. And we will be hosting a series of discussion groups with women in our community that can come in and, and uh, we don't want to be naive enough to think that we know exactly what women want. So we want <laughs> women to tell us and to be participants in designing what this concept could look like. Mm -hmm. And depending on how that goes, we'll, we'll see if we can help bring um, high quality custom clothing to the women of these cities as well. That's awesome, Colin. Well, um, it, it seems like, you know, Alton Lane is really on an upward trend, you know, growing consistently and exploring new things, innovating, and, and that really, I think your case really drives home the importance of experimenting and trying new things and being able to grow from, you know, those lessons learned and, and you know, seeing what sticks with consumers. So thank you so much again for opening your great showroom to us today. And thank you, you're always welcome. Thank you so much. And for telling us more about your business, a lot of really exciting stuff. Thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely. And uh, thanks everyone out there for watching.